Hello everybody, this is Oliver from Neo, and today we are going to talk about brewing Gyokuro in different Kyusu or different teapot sizes. For this I have brought two Kyusus, so a small one, it's about 100 milliliter of a size and I have my standard black clay Kyusu here um, which is around 250 milliliters. And I gonna brew the same Gyokuro, and this is the Gyokuro Chame Jin, um, so the golden pack. This one here, which I'm going to brew in uh, different uh, sizes or uh, different amounts of water. Good, so let's dive directly into it. So what you can see, I um, have here a Samidori Gyokuro. So this is really the highest grade Gyokuro from Mr. Sakamoto. What you can see, it's really, really, really dark. And the leaves of the Samidori, they're a little bit smaller than, for example, a Yabukita one. So um, you have also a little bit finer leaves of this tea here. It's not a sign of bad quality. It's just that the shape of the needles is a little bit smaller. So I take five grams for each tea and I just put it into the Kyusu and I'm gonna fill it up here with around 150 milliliters of water and here It's around 80 milliliters, so we have double the amount of water and we're just gonna leave it in now for two minutes. The two minutes are over, so we're gonna just pour the tea into the glass. Here, the smaller amount. Bring out all the water. So, just for you to have a look how the different of the tea is. Now, here, the 150 milliliter, what we can see, it's clearly more greenish than the one uh, with 80 milliliter. So, what you can see is already in terms of color, this is definitely more intense. Uh, the color is more strong and uh, this one here is also a little bit more shiny and going more into the green direction. But what does it do to the taste? So let's smell, maybe just smell the leaf first in the cuses there, if there's a difference. Some terms of brewing. So the leaves are quite similar as you can see. So it's the same tea. So there's in the brewing, actually there's no big difference. Just here the leaves have a little bit more space while here they're a little bit close together but this doesn't give the tea a very significant difference in color this one seems a little bit more lighter in green so a little bit kind of this yellowish color or golden color carries over a little bit to the leaf while here you have a dark green in terms of smell, I have a lot of umami, so a lot of this, a little bit sweet corn flavor. I have a little bit of artichoke, a little bit of an asparagus note. And this is what I smell here. Let's go. Here it's much less intense, so this um, the umami note, so this sweet corn notice much less intense there's a little bit also more of a greenish note so I'm a little but I also get this asparagus note a little bit this artichoke note but much less intense than here now let's go into the tasting so first the high quantity or the 150 milliliter of water it 
So it's a very fine, very sweet taste. The umami is a little bit delayed, so now it's coming slowly in, this savory, a little bit marine note. But in the beginning, it's very smooth. A little bit dense over the tongue, but very sweet, fine, delicate in the beginning. And now in the second phase, so it really like stretches the taste. Like first you have kind of this smooth sweetness and then later it goes over into a sweet, savory umami taste. And there a little bit more this marine um, taste is coming out now. But all in all, like the top sweet note is very strong and uh, kind of accompanying the whole taste, the whole taste development over the different stages over the whole time. So you have always a lingering small sweetness uh, with the tea. Now let's go with a higher quality, uh, with, a, with a higher, str with a stronger infusion. So 80 milliliter. Directly so the water is much more dense the umami note is kicking in directly from the beginning so you have the savory like nearly saltiness here it's nearly a saltiness of the tea but what's funny it really starts with this a little bit salty uh, marine um, savory note and this glutamine note but now changing over in a strong sweetness so it's uh, completely the other way around but it's much more intense. Here you really have this kind of a little bit this refreshing sweet and smoothness. Here the taste is really complex. The taste is really round, directly sh showing the umami taste and then going over into a lingering and long and holding on holding sweetness, which is really, really nice. So it's completely the other way around due to the fact that you have a uh, denser, denser, brewing or uh, steeping comparing uh, to the one where you have more water so I just dive in again mm -hmm. you have much more like of this this kind of yeah it's it's this umami like this strong taste of it's kind of a sweet corn asparagus and kind of a nearly um, kind of the seaweedy salty taste so a very very strong also uncommon unknown a little bit for us like the strength of this taste but then changing directly into a sweet note and now lingering as a sweet aftertone in in my um, in my palate. So very very beautiful in terms of first it's a surprising really strong note, but then changing over into a smaller and smoother note. And now it's really like this sweetness, also a little bit of flower notes, um, nearly a little bit like a oolong but there's not this freshness of the oolong like oolong has these sweet fresher tones and here you have a sweet full bodied but still a little bit of this umami a little bit of the savory note lingering so it's uh yeah and a little bit more of a kind of there's a small hint of cashew nut as well so very interesting very intense in the beginning it's like a it's like a, a intense umami hit in the beginning so this savory hit but then it develops really into a smooth and sweet tone and here mm -hmm. mm. it's much sweeter in the beginning it stays in general it's just much more on the sweet side so the more space of the water so it also told me this a little bit in the nose it's by giving more space more water to the tea leaves they don't um, develop such an intense concentrated umami flavor 
leaving more space for the sweetness and the kind of a little bit this marine savory note goes a little bit down but is then coming up more in the later stage of drinking of this tea so now i have this savory sweetness coming up very very interesting personally i still prefer the bigger one but uh, in Japan, what you will see when you go to uh, green tea houses or tea houses in general, when they serve you Gyokuro, it's mostly with a very little amount of water um, due to the fact that you can appreciate very, very different, much more extreme uh, taste notes, I would say. So here I have a really intense savoriness in the beginning and then going into a sweetness, into a nuttiness. Here the tea is not that complex anymore, but there's much more on the sweet side. And me, as I'm not a Navid daily Gyokuro drinker, I like the bigger amount a little bit better because it shows a little bit more of the smooth side of the tea. Good. So, this was it. Double Gyokuro brewing, once with only 80 milliliters and one 100 with one 150 milliliters. 60 degrees was water, 60 degrees Celsius, and um, yeah, try it out for yourself. You can also take a normal cuse and just fill it up with very little amount of water, just to have once this experience how this uh, how this is. It's absolutely interesting and worthwhile to do it once, just to see how one tea can differ from um, a small amount of water brewing to a little bit of a normal quantity water brewing. So thanks a lot for watching, I wish you a great day and see you soon, bye!